Hi YouTubers, Mrs. Bruce here. Uh, Bruce and I have some chairs in our backyard that we've had for several years that we absolutely love. Nice and big and sturdy, have drink holders in them. And we bought two about four years ago and then we bought two more this year. And the two that we bought four years ago have showed a lot of age. Um, including, uh, they sit out in the sun all the time so it's just going to be, they're just going to get aged. Anyway, I did a little um, asking to Bruce, what could we do about them to make them less faded looking? And um, I've tried washing them with uh, Mr. Clean Eraser and all kinds of different stuff, and they don't seem to brighten up at all. I didn't want to put any WD-40 or Vaseline or anything like that that I've read online, because then that's just going to make it gooey when people sit on them. So in discussion, we came up with a thought that um, Bruce, that Bruce, um, uh, uses the blowtorch when he has a piece of plastic on a lawnmower that is really faded so let's give that a try. So we've got, did one, so we've got a before and after. Um, it's not perfect um, but basically he's just heating it up. Make sure you're in a well ventilated place because when we started out we had garage doors closed and that got quite yucky really fast. Um, then we, uh, we tried a heat gun. Heat gun was way too slow, so the blowtorch is way faster. And you just keep moving it back and forth like you're spray painting something. And it just kind of melts the surface of it and gives it a nice sheen. It's not perfect, doesn't look perfect, but one thing it does get rid of is the uh, faded stuff had really bad, almost like a grit feel to it because the resin has started to break down where after doing the blowtorch to them they feel much better so um, yeah just all over the place we didn't bother doing the back side or the bottom because it looks pretty good but just to give it a fresh look so it gives you an idea how to do it and um, that's it Thanks a lot for watching. Okay, so that works so well with the chairs. We've now are doing the little table that's in the backyard. No, not the car, not the car. <laughs> bad first, bad. So yeah, so it's kind of just a refresher. Now before we started, I did wash all the furniture down with dish soap and water and then rinsed it with vinegar and water just to get any you know, scum and dirt and stuff off of it. But yeah, no, we're, it's not perfect, but it's, it's a refresher that will work for us right now. Okay, so we've got our, our chairs here. We've got our refinished chairs and we've got our new chairs. So on the end are the new chairs. In the middle are the chairs that we just refinished with the blowtorch. Um, they all look pretty good from a distance and actually up close they don't look that bad either. So they look, feel great, they don't have that grit feel to them anymore. Um, so the, yeah, we're really pleased with them, really happy, hope they last a while, don't know for sure. But they're nice sturdy chairs, we really like them, just wanted to give them a refresh. And that's where Bruce likes to sit in the backyard under the big tree and have an adult beverage from time to time. So, um, good luck if you try it yourself. Thanks a lot. Bye. Don't burn yourself. <laughs> Meal call. This one's a fun one. Uh, it's been on my, uh, on my desk for a couple of days. Sorry about that. And we've been busier than... Can I say... No, I can't say it. So this is from... The Chubby Butcher, and I've just subscribed to his channel. He's uh, he's in big with uh, uh, Eliminator Performance. Here's a little note. Hi Bruce, thanks for subscribing and your support, Chubby Butcher. Well, I don't know. I think I should probably get a sticker that says Chubby Telephone Man. Then, eh? Whoop. There we go. Isn't that nice? Now let's just get a little rag, and we're gonna stick the Chubby Butcher. Where do we put them? Over here. 
He's got some pretty good company up there now, eh? How about right up there beside Minute Man? I'm kind of trying to keep him on this side of the of my uh, professional studio lighting. So let's just uh, have a look at that. Maybe right there we should be able to zing in on that. Chubby Butcher, thank you very much. I've been watching his channel, and I'm going to do it, the videos. Well, a few months old, but I'm going to. We buy the. Uh, I'll start again. We buy the uh, the pork loin, and he does a great job on the pork loin. You guys have got to go to his channel and check it out. Let's just uh, aluminium. Lord help me if I ever weld on this. This was originally. This aluminum was up here for a welding guard. <laughs> Chubby Butcher, thank you, buddy. Love your channel. I should comment more. But like I said, the last month, we're doing house stuff, and uh, that's got to be done, you know. So thank you. All right, my friends. I want you guys to have just a quick look around. I've got some batteries on float over there. But... This is the first time since April that we haven't had any handlebars sticking up in here. For the first time this year, I am done with commercial equipment, like, you know, fixing a lawnmower, fixing a pressure washer, fixing a snowblower. This is the first time this has happened. Well, my friends, just take a look. Something's missing. Frank's at the doctor. But it's a good thing. I just did a uh, service on my wife's car. And I'm just getting a little too, what do you call it, elderish. I can do her car still. I can. It only takes me half an hour for me to service her car, air filter, air oil change, service check, fluids, you know, cabin filter, all that stuff. Got it. But my truck, I don't know, has multiple grease certs. Uh, spark plugs are gonna crawl into the engine bay. Air filter, PCV valve, oil change. Plus the steering is just a little bit loose. I don't know if they're going to do anything about that. They might check it and say it's it's safe. And the brakes, the the brakes are soft on the first push, but they, it still stops. So this is the kind of stuff I'm dealing with on my truck. Uh, I want it to last a lot longer. I just did a value check on it, and it's worth a lot more now than it, did, it was three years ago. And for me to spend a new truck. That replacement truck is 76,000 Canadian, and I put 2,000 miles maybe a year on it, 2,500 kilometers. So for me, I'm going to keep old Frank going. That was the decision we made just a little while ago, and uh, he should be coming back tomorrow. I don't know if they can do all that work in a day and a half if they have to change a brake booster or a control arm or something like that. I kind of know what it needs, right? You know me. So anyway, Frank's playing hooky. All right, guys. Frank's back. They didn't find much. It had been two years since I took him in. I don't put enough kilometers on it. To even warrant an oil change in that frame of time. And, but you guys have to understand that the, I store the vehicle inside at plus three degrees and it's a very dry climate so there's no danger of rusting inside. 99% of these Chevys rust around, touch wood, rust around here. But let's have a look at the bill. It was a major tune-up, right? I just take it in there and I say to them, Fix whatever is wrong. So, 
light. Brake system check. They didn't feel a soft brake pedal, but I did. All hoses and lines were in good shape. Tires rotated. They suggested that they did clean out all of the brake dust from the shoes. It still has brake shoes on the back. And they did a couple of clicks on the automatic tensioner. Uh, door handle on driver door loose or stretched. Inspected for concern found that the handle strip on the inside door is missing. So the door is closing too far. We can work on that. Air conditioning concern. Uh, re recharged air conditioning and that's only the second time in 25 years. Steering concern. Performed steering suspension. Found very minor play in idler arm and pitman arm. So that's cool. Oil change courtesy inspection. Okay. Maintenance tune-up and eight cylinders. Spark plugs, 168. $21 each. I can you know what it's they're marking it up. I understand that. Fuel filter, ten dollars and seventy-eight cents. PCV valve, eight dollars and sixty-seven cents. Air filter, twenty-two dollars. And labor, one point seven hours for 231 so that was a big part of the job was the uh, was the uh, tune-up evacuate and recharge air conditioning $136 lube 530 oil oil filter oh brake cleaner I see they use a little bit of brake cleaner yeah 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 Total before miscellaneous, 788. Uh, taxes, shop supplies. I hate that shop supplies. I wish they just added in. $852. So when you think now, I won't have to take it in for at least another year unless something big happens. I'll be good. And I'll tomorrow morning when everything settles and the oil drips down and all that, I will check that. So, yay! Frank's back. I, you know what, all my, my friends are buying, okay guys, my, my friends are buying new vehicles, but they're used vehicles, they're buying three to seven year old or older trucks, and they're paying 30,000 bucks for a used, used truck, so I've been looking around, and I don't know, what is a 25 year old Z70, Z71, Z71 with the cast iron 350 cell for these days? Let's find out from you guys. I'm going to look it up and we'll compare notes. Thanks.